This is Bob Oliphant from the Westford Historical Society and Museum, bringing you episode 42 of season three of the Westford Wardsman podcast. The Westford Wardsman newspaper was part of Turner's Public Spirit, a weekly newspaper in air a century ago. In this episode, we'll be reading the Wardsman for the week ending Saturday, October 15th, 1910, and I'll elaborate on what was happening in Westford that week. This week starts with the Westford Center section, spelled C-E-N-T-R-E. Mrs. Jenny Emerson of Ward Hill, Haverhill, and Lowell Layton of Oshkosh, Wisconsin, have been recent guests of Mrs. Mary E. Fletcher. Mr. Layton is a native of Westford, having been born in the house that formerly stood where our town library now does. He keenly enjoyed looking over our village, noting on and commending its improvements and changes. But like many others loyal to the old Westford Academy, he much regretted its present state from its former dignity. The, the, the old Westford Academy he's referring to is the original academy building, which had been moved across Boston Road in 1907 to its present site, where it is now the Westford Museum. Uh, in 1910, it was in a state of disrepair, but would be remodeled into apartments in 1911 by Henry O. Kyes. It was later used as the Westford Center Fire Station and is now the Westford Museum. Columbus Day was observed by the schools being closed and the children having the holiday. Flags were in evidence through the village. Little little Gussie Anderson of Brookside, one of the primary pupils at the Frost School, while playing at recess Tuesday, fell and received a badly cut lip and mouth. The little lad was taken to Dr. Wells and a number of stitches were necessary to close the wound. Reverend and Mrs. David Wallace and Miss Sarah Loker have been attending what they, what they could this week of the sessions of the American Board Centenar- Centenary and the National Conference of Congregational Churches, which double event is being convened in Boston this week and next. On this account, the regular church prayer meeting was omitted this week. Mr. and Mrs. William L. Woods have transferred their household goods this week to their recently purchased home and are busily getting settled. Everyone is glad to see them established in a home of their own and wish them all happiness and prosperity. Mr. and Mrs. David Desmond, Miss Alice, and William McDonald attended Brockton, Brockton Fair on Wednesday going by auto with A. H. McDonald as a chauffeur. Mrs. John P. Wright underwent a serious surgical operation at her home in Lowell on Wednesday of this week, performed by Dr. Mason of Boston, assisted by Dr. and Mrs. Wells of this town. What would seem more than the average share of sickness has been portion of this household during, during the past few years, and the sincere sympathy of their many Westford friends go out to them at this time. Uh, Can you imagine a doctor today coming to your home to perform a, quote, serious surgical operation, end quote? I don't think so. Word comes from our veteran townsman, Hiram Dane, who is in California, that he is well and enjoying his experiences there, although somewhat troubled with rheumatism. Mr. Dane expects to come back to his Westford home next spring. He is at Glendora near Los Angeles. He was one of Westford's uh, Civil War veterans. Since the electric cars resumed traffic on our branch line in the spring, motorman Sherlock and conductor Cutter have scarcely missed a trip with their cars. Once or twice they have been held up for minor repairs, but there has never been any unnecessary delay. The patrons of the road very much appreciate having so prompt, efficient, and courteous a set of men for the cars. These are the trolley cars that used to run up to... um, up the hill to Westford Center, to the common. A funeral is the next section. The funeral of Mary Elizabeth Colburn took place from her late home on Friday afternoon, October 7th at half past one, and was well attended by neighbors, friends, and relatives. 
Reverend David Wallace of the Congregational Church, of which the deceased was a member, was the officiating clergyman. A trio from the church consisting of Miss Lillian Atwood, Miss May Atwood, and E.G. Boynton sang two selections, No Sorrow There and Looking This Way. The bearers were her two sons, Charles D. and J. Henry Colburn, and James Hildreth and Charles Hildreth. The floral offerings were very beautiful, and turban was beside kindred dust in West Lawn Cemetery. Next is the Grange section. At the last meeting of the Grange, the attendance was good and much routine business was transacted. The names of four applications for membership to be initiated for the fall class were ball balloted for as follows. Mrs. Arthur E. Day, Miss Addie Day, Benjamin Prescott by initiation, and Arthur E. Day by demit. A uh, dement mean, means he resigned his membership from s s another Grange somewhere else and transferred it to the Westford Grange. It was voted to extend invitations to Acton and Groton Granges for Neighbors Night, November 17th. The lecturer's hour was a social time. Dancing to the accompaniment of the Grange Orchestra was enjoyed, and tables of whist were arranged for those who enjoy the, the game. It was voted to have the secretary pro tem tend to the absent master and secretary, Mr. and Mrs. Frank C. Wright, an expression of sympathy from the members in their illness. Wednesday evening, a special meeting was held for conferring first and second degrees on the four candidates. The third and fourth degrees will be conferred at the next meeting, October 20th, the third degree work being done by the ladies' staff, which have been rehearsing for this event. Next is the About Town section. At the sixth Councilor District Convention, Republican, the Honorable Herbert E. Fletcher of Westford was nominated to serve another term in the state's Executive Council. Mr. Fletcher, who has also served in the House and Senate, is a conservative, a prominent businessman, and a valuable man for the party and the state. At a meeting of the Republican Town Committee last Saturday evening, it was decided to hold a rally at the town hall on Wednesday evening, October 19th, when this array of ability will entertain William H. Wilder of Gardner, the Honorable Frank P. Bennett Jr. of Saugus, Judge John J. Pickman, and Alonzo G. Walsh of Lowell. Everyone close by and afar off, in town, out of town, and elsewhere, are invited listeners. Honorable Herbert Fletcher has commenced the foundation of his new house on Oak Hill. The underground tenement to be occupied by fruit and vegetables will be cement to the level of the green grass, then skyward of stone. The house would be located on a prominent elevation facing the Groton Road and east of the crossing of the Steam Railroad. Tarbell of Lowell is landscape manager and Stickney of Lowell is house fitter. And that house uh, still stands in, on that spot. Ice thinner than skating, but thick enough to drown, was what the weather gave to the public on Thursday morning along the lily of the valley of the Stony Brook. A forest fire started with the high wind on Wednesday afternoon on Dug Hill, westerly of Burgess Pond. Fortunately, the northeast wind controlled controlled towards the railroad track in Hillside Park. Otherwise, the heavy forest to the east would have been warmed more than is necessary. Chief Forest Fire Warden John A. Healy was soon enough on the scene to discover that the fire was apparently one of plan. Three separate fires had been started along an old road. Reverend Charles A. Allen of Waverly, professor at Harvard, conducted the services at the Unitarian Church last Sunday. Much sympathy goes to the Nelson family, who live at West Chelmsford Corner on the Lowell Road. A few weeks ago, Margaret, a sweet, lovable child, died with typhoid fever, and Wednesday, the son August, just entering into manhood, died with the same disease. Everything possible was done for the recovery. Trained nurses were in attendance and doctors in consultation, but the dreaded fever could not be allayed. To this doubly saddened home goes the true sympathy of friends. 
Mr. and Mrs. William J. Parfit moved to Hopkinton, New Hampshire this week, where he is to have charge of a large farm. The next meeting of the Board of Registration will be held at Graniteville on Monday evening, October 17th at Healy's Hall from 7.30 to 9, at Forge Village next Wednesday evening at Abbott's Hall from 7.30 to 9. The last registration meeting will be held at the Town Hall Saturday, October 22nd from noon to 10 o'clock. Mrs. Elizabeth Peckins has sold to John Feeney the triangular lot of land bounded by Main Street, Providence, and Leland Roads. Daniel H. Sheehan of Pigeon Hill has several portable engines sidetracked at Westford Station. This added business suggests to him the desire to sell his cotton woolen cider mill. The site of that mill can still be seen off Lowell Road, kind of across the street from the Pelatia Fletcher Road. The next section is entitled Death. Mrs. Clementine Kai's Sweat, spelled S-W-E-T-T, died in Boston last week Friday as the result of a surgical operation. She was the daughter of the late Trueworthy Kyes and was born at Westford Center in 1838 and was therefore 72 years old. Most of her girlhood life was passed on Francis Hill on her father's farm in the easterly part of the town where culture, method, and variety were foundation principles of the old homestead life. She was one of the old-time scholars in the old Stony Brook district in the strenuous days of the old brick schoolhouse. Near the close of the reign of the old district system, she was for several years a teacher in this historic district. As such, she was apt, cultured, winsome, methodical. Trueworthy Kyes, who was born in 1805 and died in 1871, lived at Francis Hill Road, which was, and his, his house was built in the mid 1600s, per the book New Old Houses of Westford, uh, edited by Ellen Hardy and Marilyn Day. It, it, it is one of the oldest houses in Westford. Trueworthy was the great 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 grandson of Solomon Kyes and Francis Grant Kyes who built the house in the mid-1600s. Francis Hill, spelled F-R-A-N-C-E-S, was named for uh, Francis Grant Kyes, the wife of Solomon. It's often misspelled with an I instead of an E in the Westford Wardsman of 100 years ago. The funeral took place from her home in Winchester on Monday forenoon, Reverend D.B. Scott of Lancaster officiating. Burial was in Riverside Cemetery, North Chelmsford. She left besides her husband, Charles E. Sweat, two sons, Ralph and Arthur, and one daughter, Edith. The next section is the Forge Village section. The ladies' sewing circle will hold their first supper of the season at Recreation Hall Saturday evening from 6 to 8 o'clock. Delicious brown bread, baked beans, cakes and pies of every description, and coffee will be served. The affair is for the benefit of St. Andrew's Mission. The horse sheds in the rear of the mission house, which were built some time ago, have received a coat of paint, which adds considerable to the appearance. The expense was met by the ladies' sewing circle. Hugh Ferguson had charge of the painting. The members of the Loyal Self-Help Lodge, O-I-O-O-F-M-U, that's odd fellows, observed the 100th anniversary of the order with a social dance in Abbott Hall last Saturday evening. A large number were present from Littleton, Ayer, Graniteville, Westford, and North Chelmsford. Dancing was enjoyed from 7.30 to 11.30. At intermission, refreshments of ice cream and cake was served. Music was furnished by Thayer's Orchestra of Pepperell. All the members of the order wore souvenir badges. At a meeting of the John Edwards Host Company held on Wednesday, it was voted to hold a social dance in Abbott Hall, Saturday evening, October 22nd. Music will be furnished by Thayer's Orchestra of Pepperell. The affair will be held for the benefit of the Hose Company. The money will be used for the Fireman's Field Day next year. 
the Young Men's RTS, that stands for Religious Track Society, opened up their new club rooms last week, Friday evening. A minstrel show was held and a clever performance was given and greatly enjoyed by the large number who were invited to attend. Charles Flanagan acted as interlocutor, Philip Lord and Edward Spinner with the end men. These are traditional um, roles for minstrel shows. Many original and local jokes kept the audience in roars. Solos were sung by John Spinner Jr., Jr., Dola Dumont, William Goodall. An excellent program is being arranged for the coming winter when they will entertain their friends once a week. Cameron School closed on Wednesday and was observed as Columbus Day. The mills ran as usual on that day. The infant daughter of Mr. and Mrs. James Bedoit, who has been seriously ill with cholera and phantom, has had a charge for the better. Uh, uh, sorry, a change for the better. Hopes are now entertained for her recovery. Uh, this was Mary Laura Juliet Benoit, born September 2, 1910. Mr. and Mrs. W.C. Precious, James H. Brown, and Edward T. Hanley were among those who attended the Mechanics Fair at Boston uh, this week. William Weaver had a narrow escape from serious injury on Saturday evening. As it is, as it is he is suffering from a bad sprain. While attempting to board an electric car at the railroad crossing on Middlesex Street, Lowell, for North Chelmsford, Mr. Weaver had one hand on the car and was waiting for a passenger to get off when the car started suddenly, he alleges, throwing him to the ground with considerable force. He was picked up and assisted to the car. Sunday morning, his hand was so badly swollen that the services of a physician was necessary, and his hand was put in splints. He also received bruises about his body and knees. The next section is the Graniteville section. At the 10.30 o'clock Mass in St. Catherine's Church on Sunday morning, Reverend Father M. E. Doherty delivered another of those instructive sermons on, quote, the sacrament of penance, end quote. These sermons are being followed with deep interest by the parishioners of St. Catherine's Church. The Holy Rosary devotions were held in the church on Thursday evening at 7.30 and were largely attended. Many people from this village attended the 100th anniversary of the M.U. Oddfellows that was, uh, that was held in Forge Village on Saturday evening. The celebration took the form of a dance that proved to be very enjoyable to all. The Ladies' Aid Society of the Methodist Episcopal Church met with Mrs. J.B. Carmichael on Thursday afternoon. Chestnut parties are very much in evidence here at present, and those who have been gathering report the supply quite plentiful this year. The chestnut woods beyond Scribner, Scribner Hill, which is actually in Tingsboro, north of Westford, appear to attract the largest number of people. Unfortunately, all of the chestnut, or almost all of the chestnut trees are, are gone uh, due to a blight, although uh, there is a, a, a uh, a chestnut, or what I believe is a chestnut sapling growing out of a an old stump along Flag Road that I see now and then. The members of the soccer football club are now in fine fettle and hope to be in readiness for their game in Fort Forge Village next Saturday. The local fire department were called out for a woodland fire back of the baseball grounds on Wednesday afternoon, and owing to the brisk wind, several acres were burned over before the fire was gotten under control. This is the third fire that has taken place in the vicinity of those woods during the past four weeks. Carol Furbush and friend of the USS Nebraska have been recent visitors at the home of Mr. and Mrs. Frank L. Furbush in, the, in this village. Uh, Carol Furbush was, had been in the Navy for several years, as mentioned quite frequently in the wardsman. The next section is called C of F of A, which stands for Companions of the Foresters of America. 
Cameron Circle, C of F of A, held a largely attended and interested meeting in their rooms on Tuesday night. The meeting was made notable by the presence of two Grand Circle officers, Mrs. Evelyn Sawyer of Boston, Grand Supreme Supervisor of Laws and Acting State Deputy, and also Mrs. Julia McCarthy, McCarty of Lynn, Grand Chief, Champ- Com- Grand Chief Companion. Before the meeting, both officers were entertained at the home of Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Wall. During the meeting, under the head of new business, Mrs. Julia B. Wall, who has been treasurer of the local circle for the past four years and was recently elected to the position in the Grand Circle of Grand Outside Guard, was duly installed in her new position by Acting State Deputy Mrs. Evelyn Sawyer of Boston, assisted by Grand Chief Companion Mrs. Julia McCarty of Lynn. For the good of the order, both the visiting grand officers were heard in short addresses, which proved very interesting to the members present. After the meeting, a short entertainment was given, after which refreshments were served. The whole affair proved to be very enjoyable. Cameron Circle is now enjoying prosperity and is looking forward to many pleasant social events to be held during the coming season. That's the news in Westford for the week ending October 15th, 1910. Thank you for listening, and thanks to Ryan Cousins of Westford Cat for providing technical support. You can find transcriptions and podcasts from the Westford Wardsman at our website at museum.westford.org or visit the Historical Society's Facebook page for more Westford news from days gone by. This is Bob Oliphant, and I hope you will join us for next week's Westford Wardsman podcast. Thank you.